my background, I actually um, come from a perspective that the lockdowns are economic lockdowns rather than medical lockdowns. I did study economics for A-level. My degree is actually in theology. I did theology at Trinity. I suppose that furnished me with the ability to be more of a critical thinker. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't put much credence into what I learned in either. I find that most of what um, I've learned came from independent research. The money is backed by nothing, or it's not money, it's currency. It's backed by absolutely nothing. Um, that has created this debt-based system that in truth collapsed in 2008. This all should have happened really around then, but they managed to reinflate the balloon. What I would explain to people is it's like a hot air balloon that a hole was torn in it in 2008, and they managed to reinflate it with quantitative easing, um, printing money into the economy to try and plug the hole. There's an ability, it sounds insane, but there's an ability that they can create money out of nothing and loan it to the government who pay them back with interest. They're, they're really only supposed to um, regulate the commercial banks. Mm -hmm. But the issue now is that in August of 2019, um, before this pandemic, um, the central banks decided to go direct. There was a meeting at Jackson's Hole, that's where like economists and bankers meet. They decided to go direct. Central banks were going to give you a, a digital currency. They were going to bypass the commercial banks. One month later, there was a crisis in the repo market where that's where the, the current QE really started in September of 2019. There's, it's, an un, it's an overnight um, <coughs> money market. If you imagine, it's like a pawn shop where they will um, give treasuries to the central bank with a repurchase agreement that at an interest rate of about 2% and they lend between each other. That market seized um, in 2019 and the central bank had to start printing the money then to the tune of like, I think 50 to 100 million per night. They could not plug that hole. One month later, you have event 201. People have, they don't really understand the concept of money. Money is goods and services in the economy and your labor. Currency represents money, but we have been fooled into believing that currency is money and they're printing money out of nothing, especially right now, the money printed, there's been um, between 25 and 40% of all money in creation has been printed in this past 15 months. Money creation is inflation. People think inflation is an increase in prices. That's the consequence of inflation. So meanwhile, while they're doing this, um, money's worth more where it enters the market. I think it's the Cantillion effect. So where it's coming in to the market, um, they're buying up the, a lot of properties. I know that BlackRock currently own, I think, 53% of um, the asset-based mortgages in America. They're mm -hmm. also buying up the properties. Um, Lloyds here have decided that they're going to become private landlords. What I see them doing right now is printing money out of nothing. They're giving us an amount of it. Um, to pacify us so that we stay at home while they buy up all the actual assets. Richard Werner um, looked into this because there's there's a few theories of where our money comes from, like in terms of debt. Um, because 97% of all the money in the economy right now has been generated from debt. There's only 3% that is signed money. So he, there's, whether it's, are loans created from money that's actually in the bank that they're lending out money that they actually have, or is it fractional reserve lending? Fractional reserve lending will be when you put a hundred pound into the bank, <coughs> they have to hold say 1% of that, but then they can lend out 99 pounds, but then that goes into another account and they can lend out 99% of that. So 
that hundred pounds can actually be lent out to the tune of 10,000. He looked further into it and he actually went and borrowed 200,000 euros from a bank and did a forensic analysis of their balance sheet. And it proves that th that money was literally created. You created that promissory note and it was created there and then on that debt. Like this is why house prices are so um, high right now because for a bank to lend, for a commercial bank to lend um, for a house, it's, it's pretty much a guaranteed loan. You, you're making money from nothing out of the interest. Um, we are in a non-productive society because there's no, they don't lend to small businesses because there's that risk there. So they have created these asset bubbles by mm -hmm. their actions and what they're doing. And I always find it um, interesting that people have this idea, well, I bought my house for 150,000 and now it's worth 400,000. It's the same house. I never, unless you've, I understand if you've done work to it, but if you haven't done anything to it, you do not, you, you are not any richer. It's this con that you actually are more wealthy because it's now worth 400,000. You're not, it's the same house. No, I think that they're flat out being manipulated. Um, there is like this, you, what you are and aren't allowed to do and the idea that it's for your own good. Mm. Well, I'm an adult now, so I can decide, even if it's going out to bars and stuff, as an adult, I can decide, well, I have maybe have COPD and, you know, around flu season, it's maybe best for you not to get a flu. So you would say, I'm not going to go out. Mm -hmm. As an adult, you make those decisions and you accept the repercussions of those decisions. It's this idea that they care for you. They do not care for you. They're, and you're being blindly led into this concept that they're doing it for your best interests. And then you believe them, even though all of the data shows that we are being lied to. Um, there is wordplay in the like the cases rather than hospital admin, uh, admissions. Um, there's so much manipulation going on, even the, the way, if you go into Tesco's, I feel like I'm in a Darren Brown, the heist show. You um, are going in there going, <laughs> but other than that, you wouldn't even notice it. I do not have anything in the bank. If you have money in the bank, there's a few issues with the bank. Um, there is the bail-in laws that come out in 2014 that should the, the bank collapse, your money will be taken, it's, your money is deposited into the bank. You're actually putting it in loan to the bank. So they own that money. People have this idea that that's my money in the bank. It's not, you have loaned them that money and that's why you get like, even though it's not, 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 not one, percent interest it's still on loan should that bank become insolvent you will be given shares of an insolvent bank they actually only hold i think less than half a percent of that and even at that you have to realize that um the government themselves are on the verge of insolvency if the government were to say okay so say that uh, it's been inflated by 40%. There's 40% creation of all the money that's been created, 40% has created in the past 15 months. If the bank was to go in, if the government was to say to you, okay, you have 10,000 pounds in the bank, we're going to tax you 40% and take 4,000. People would be ratting in the streets. But if you inflate it to that degree, people don't see that it's the same thing. Inflation is here and people need to prepare for it. And that's where I would say anything tangible. Blockchain is here to stay. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. Um, but it is in its infancy. So it is kind of like the, do it could be like the dot-com bubble again. And it does do, well, if you take Bitcoin, for example, Bitcoin does do boom, bubble, bust, boom, bubble, bust. I think it's dropped by 80% three times. Mm. The latest correction was 65%. It has a mechanism to stabilize quantity, but right now it doesn't have a mechanism to stabilize value. So it's difficult to use it right now as a currency.
the way I explain it to people is you get car insurance and you hope that you don't get in an accident. You get house insurance, you hope your house doesn't burn down. So when you know that there is issues with supply, you should absolutely have, um, at the very least, three months supply of food. I mean, it's even with things like soap, because should the system collapse, should there be a cyber attack on banking, which is, um, there's huge potential for mm -hmm. that. Um, yeah. it, like this current pandemic, it could be very uh, advantageous to the economy should there be a crisis in banking. So say there is, that would mean that there'd be no transactions. So you would not be able to, they would just close the supermarket. My mum would have went to the supermarket um, once a week, possibly even twice, once every two weeks, and got everything that she needed. Now we're kind of going, because we're out and about and working, and you go in every day, or you're going out to eat a lot, especially in America. In America, you open the very little in their cupboards because they eat out so much. Yeah. So if everything closes down, I keep on saying, you're better looking at it than looking for it. Mm -hmm. And if you don't use it, there is plenty of food banks that are crying out for food. So if it's coming up to the best before date, donate it.